Okay. So last time we just created some art for our dialogue system. Um, so if I go into my game and go to my game folder and look at my sprites, I created uh, this uh, little NPC idle animation, which is just the NPCs just standing around. And then I made these NPC portraits that we can show uh, when our NPC and our character are talking. And I also created some character portraits. So we can show the character talking as well. Uh, and so we are going to put those into the dialogue system and then trigger our dialogue. Um, so I'm going to open up Godot and click Edit for my game. And once this loads up, I'm going to go into the scene that I added my NPC to. So under my scenes folder, I'm going to go to levels. And oh, this is level one. Uh, where did I put this guy? Did I put him in? I put him in the RPG scene. OK, so you could put him in a platform scene, too. It doesn't have to be in an RPG scene. Uh, but I put him in here. And so right now, when I play the game, I've got my NPC standing over here. And when I walk over to him, I just want to trigger a dialogue. And so as soon as I enter this area, we're going to bring up a dialogue. Sometimes you could also make it so that like something comes up for you to click on. Uh, but to save time, I'm just going to have the dialogue trigger right away. And then we'll have a conversation between the two. And then once we're done, we'll leave. So we're going to have to modify a few things in here to get this to work. But let's start by actually creating our dialogue. So when we want to add an asset into Godot, creating a dialogue system is a lot of work. And we don't want to do it from scratch. It would be too much work for us to do on our own. And so there's a lot of assets in the Godot asset library that do things that are very common in different types of games. So dialogue systems is one of them. There's a lot of stuff for physics. There's a lot of stuff for organizing scenes uh, and things like that. And so if you go to the asset library and just type in something you're looking for, a lot of the time you'll see good results. And they're usually free to use. They're usually contributed uh, by different developers who are adding open source tools to a project that they like. And so we can see here, uh, when I just when I type in dialogue, there's actually a lot of different uh, plugins that do dialogue for you. And I'm sure a lot of these are good. The one that I like using is called Dialogic. And so you can see that one here. And so I'm going to click on there. And once you click on here, you can just click download. Um, and then if I click, let's see. If I click on view files, it actually takes me to the repository where this uh, plugin is published. And the nice thing about this is you can actually see the code. If you want to change the code, you could you could do that. You could download the repository and make changes to it and then submit those changes. Um, but there's also a link here that has some documentation that shows you how to use it. So if I go over the documentation page, uh, there's all these different uh, references and tutorials. It looks like this is not <laughs> set up correctly, because this should just be rendered as HTML. I wonder why it looks like that, but whatever. Uh, maybe it's a wiki. Oh, here it is. It's in the wiki. Um, OK, so yeah, looking at it on the wiki page is probably better. Uh, so let's see, tutorials. Usually there's like a getting started. Let's see, getting, OK, getting started. OK, so you can find different tutorials and look at how things work. Um, and they also have like a Discord channel. So you could go in there and ask them questions and stuff like that. Uh, but everything you need to know about the plugin is on their page. Um, anyway, I'm just going to download it. This will just take a second. And it's going to put it inside of my add-ons folder. OK, so that's going to be good. Uh, so I'm going to click Install. 
And once it's done installing, you're going to see it's going to actually add a new section to my sort of top toolbar menu where I have the 2D, 3D script and asset library. It's actually going to add a new section over here. So some plugins that have like their own editor will add a new section to your whole project where you can edit um, the data in that section. Um, okay. So to do that, we have to go to the editor settings. And where is it? Let's search for add. Or no, maybe it's not in editor settings. Maybe it's in project settings. Uh, let's go project settings, plugins, there it is. Okay, so here's, so we don't see it yet. We have to go into project settings and then go to the plugins tab. You see Dialogic there. And we just click on enabled here. And now Dialogic appears up in this window. So if I click on Dialogic, it brings up this whole new interface. And uh, building a, a dialogue system uh, is actually a little bit of work, so I'm gonna go over it. Um, there's a few different things that we have to do. I'm not gonna go over every single component, but I'll go over the basics. So there's a few things I'm gonna skip since we don't have a ton of time, like creating a custom font and adding buttons and things like that, but I'm just gonna go over some of the basics. Um, so the first thing that we wanna do, yeah, Did you go to project project settings and go to plugins? You see it? Cool. So in Dialogic, we can see in the left hand uh, menu. It organizes the different components. So there's timelines. These are like uh, either dialogues or conversations. There's characters who are different characters that are involved in the dialogue. So you can have a character that's involved in multiple different dialogues. Um, definitions are ways that you can t get data from your dialogue into the game. So for example, if a character has like a key or a coin or something that it can give you, that's we would need a definition to make that work. And then themes are how the dialogue system looks. So there's a lot of settings there. Uh, we probably will use mostly defaults, but we can take a look at that um, and see what's available. There's also a documentation section. So there's a lot of information here, kind of like their website, where you can see all sorts of different uh, examples of how to use the plugin. So that help documentation section is really useful. And there's also some settings, which I don't think we'll really need to uh, work with. So we're just going to create one timeline with two characters, just as an example. But you can create multiple characters. You can create multiple timelines. And so to start, we're going to add in our two characters, our player and our NPC. So I'm going to click Add a Character. I'm going to give this character a name. I'm going to call it Player. Uh, you can give it a different name for the display name. And you can also give it nicknames. Uh, you can give it a description. And you can also give it a theme. So if you want to create a theme just for the player, you can do that. And then here's where we're going to add our images. So it says portraits here. And you can name the different portraits. And then you can bring up different portraits while the characters are talking. Um, so here is my first portrait default. I'm going to click on here. And it's going to go to my file uh, system. I'm going to go to sprites and get my character portraits and click open. Uh, Whoops, oh, we have to, oh crap. I forgot that, um, shoot. no, we can't actually divide these up into sprites. So actually, uh, let's just go over this real quick. That's a good example of why we can't export those as sprites. I forgot about that. So um, luckily I still have my art. So what we'll do is we'll just e export uh, zip files. So I'm gonna open up Piscal. And I'll get the portraits, and I'll have to export them not as sprite sheets, but as individual sprites. So I'll go to my game folder, go to my art, 
and go to my NPC and put my portraits in here. Yeah. You don't have to have the portraits. Yeah, the portraits are just optional. Yeah. Um, so instead of exporting a sprite sheet, what I'll do is I'll go to a zip file. And so I'll be able to export all of these images separately. So I'll call this uh, NPC portrait and then click download zip. And I'm going to put this in my sprites folder and click save. Okay, and now I'll do the same thing with my character. So I have my character portraits. I'll open that up and export as a zip. And click download zip. And so these are both zip files. So to actually use them in the game, I need to unzip them. So once I'm done with that, I'll go back to my game folder and go in my sprites folder. And here's my two zip files. I'm just gonna right click and say extract all. Okay, and it actually created a new folder with the images in it, that's fine. That'll make it easy to find. So that's my character portraits. And I'll extract my NPC portraits. And so there we go. So now I have individual images. And so I'll be able to add that into my uh, dialogue system. So I'm just going to delete these zip folders. OK, so I fixed that. Let's go back to Godot. And now when I click on the three dots here, I can go into Character Portrait. And I'll just choose the first image. OK, so there's my first one. And so then I can add. Uh, a couple more. So I'll call this one like surprised. And this one is angry. And this is really just if you want to have expressions, you don't have to do it this way. And you can have one character portrait, you can have zero character portraits, you could have more character portraits. Uh, but we just want to go over the basics. So now we have my player. Um, and I think this looks good. I could change the scale if I want to, but I think this looks fine. So I'm going to stick with this and then add a new one. But we can also make a default color for the player. So I'll make a green color. Maybe I can actually select this green over here. So that way the text will show up that color. So let's make another character. This is my NPC. I'm just calling this NPC. Uh, just to, uh, you know, just as a generic term, but if you have names for your characters, you have multiple NPCs, you can put whatever you want there. Um, so same thing here, I'm going to choose uh, the NPC portrait. So I'm going to go back, go into my NPC portraits folder. Here's the default. There's the surprised. Here's angry. And here's happy. And there we go. And I'll just choose a color to match my NPC. And so that looks good. So I've got my two characters. So for a timeline, I need to have characters. So now I can go in and build a timeline. So I'm going to click on the timelines folder. And then I'm going to use this button here that looks like a little stack of pancakes. I'm going to click Add Timeline. And then over here, we have our timeline. So I'm going to call this uh, my uh, demo. I'll just call this demo for now. And so over here, uh, let's see, can I make this bigger? It doesn't let me stretch this. Oh, there we go. OK. So over here, you see the events. So these are all the different types of events that can happen in a dialogue. Um, so normally, you have a few basic events, like a, some text. You have a character that enters. Um, and then you have uh, questions, choices, uh, conditions. And then there's uh, different uh, timing things that can happen here. You can move to different timelines. Um, you can close the dialogue, you can set values, 
Uh, there's audio that you can add, you can change the graphics, and you can also emit signals to Godot. So you can tell Godot to you know, change the level or uh, have a different state. You can call nodes in Godot. So there's a lot of different stuff you can do here. So I'm just going to add in my characters to start. So I'm going to add my player. Um, we're going to, you can choose an animation. So let's just say fade in. Uh, and then you can choose the portrait. We'll just go with default. And then you can also choose the position that the character is in. So let's put the character, the player in the first position. So then we can add a new character, do the NPC, the default, and we can also fade in. And we will put the NPC in the second position. So you can actually position your different characters in your dialogue. Um, so then we can add some text and we can choose the character. And we can say we want the default portrait. And he can say, hello. Welcome to uh, the, uh, what is our NPC welcoming, 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 welcoming us to? Welcome to the, uh, where are we in this scene? We're kind of like on an island. So I'll have him say welcome to the island. And uh, so we can have our first bit of dialogue. And then I'll add some text. I'll have the player default. They can respond. Hello. Uh, and then we can say, we can ask the NPC a question, or the NPC can ask us a question, and then we can give different options. So let's ask the NPC a question. So let's say, uh, where am I supposed to go? Or actually, no, we can't. OK, let's uh, just say have him say hello. And then we'll have the NPC ask a question, because the NPC can't have choices. So I'll add some more text, and I'll have the NPC say, uh, what are you looking for? And so now we can have an option. So we have three bits of dialogue. Uh, and then uh, this actually should be a question. So let's paste this in here and delete this one. OK. So the NBC will say, what are you looking for? And then we have a choice. OK, so the choice could be, so we can have multiple choices here. So um, we could say uh, the end of the level, or we could add another choice and say uh, more apples. And then depending on which choice we take, we can also set conditions if the you know if the player has like certain attributes already, uh, and so based on the uh, choice, we can go to different endings. Um, so if we go to end branch here, so if, with this choice, we can have a response. So the NPC can say. Let's say that NPC is surprised, and he says, why do you think the level has an ending? Or uh, for this choice, uh, we can have the NPC be angry and say, those are my apples. OK, so we can create these different branches, and then we can continue making more choices and have you can make very, very complex dialogue trees um, using this system with just a few basic options. Um, so there's a lot more we could do here, but I want to just kind of wrap this part up so we can get into actually implementing it. So we'll end this branch after those two options. And then let's have our player just get out of here. So I'm going to drag this down here and have the player say, uh, I'm going to run away.
And so then we need to exit the dialog. So I'll put this down here and we'll close the dialog. Okay, so I'm gonna save this. This is my basic default dialog. Not very exciting, but it'll get us at least to see what's happening with our dialog system. And so now we need to add in a little bit of code um, to have our NPC react to the player. Um, the code from uh, last semester was like very complicated, I realized. So I'm just gonna add in some new code for this bit, um, borrowing from that code a little bit. I'm just gonna simplify it a little bit and I'll, uh, I'll paste that, uh, that code onto, into Discord um, and put a link to it on the video as well. So let's go back to our 2D scene. And we have our NPC here. And so we're gonna attach a script here. Um, and so you guys don't have to code this from scratch, but uh, I'm just gonna throw some stuff in here and I'll put the script, I'll uh, put the script online as I mentioned. So we're gonna make a new script here. And I wanna make sure to put it in the scripts folder. And so we're gonna call this NPC, uh, whoops. So I wanna call this NPC dialog. So if I have other types of NPCs, then we can have other types of scripts. And so I'll click open. And inherits 2D, area 2D is fine. And so we'll create this. So basically what we wanna do is set up a, uh, a signal for when the player enters the NPC area, it will trigger the dialogue. So what we can do is select our NPC and go to the node section and go to body entered and connect it to our NPC script. So on NPC body entered, uh, when the player enters the body, that's when we will trigger our dialogue. So we're just gonna simplify this a little bit in last semester, I did some more options. So if you're interested in adding other options, you can look at the video from last semester. Um, I'm gonna double check my player and NPC layers real quick. So I wanna make sure that they can collide with each other. So my player is just on layer one and my NPC. So the NPC should not be on layer one. And I actually don't have an obstacle, a layer for the NPC. So I'm gonna choose layer eight since it's not assigned, and it's gonna interact with layer one, so that's fine. So I'll just assign that real quick. I'll go to project settings, go to layers, go to 2D physics, and we'll just make layer eight our NPC layer. So that way we know that any body that enters this uh, collider can only be our NPC body. Okay. So now I'm gonna get some code from last year's script. So I'm gonna to go to my GitHub page real quick. And we're not gonna take all of this, as I mentioned, we're gonna simplify this just a little bit. Uh, but this is my game from last semester. And so I'm gonna to go to the NPC script. And so the first thing that we need to do is add the dialogue name. So this is this first line of code right here. And so I'm gonna paste this up at the top. So the dialogue name, for the default, I'm gonna put demo here. And the reason I do this is if you look, if we go back to the 2D view and look at our NPC script, now there's a dialogue name with uh, a field where we can write in different names for our dialogues. So all we have to do is match that to our timeline in Dialogic, and that will load the correct dialogue. So we wanna have that set up correctly. Okay. So looking at the rest of this script, um, so we're gonna skip this bit and we're just gonna add in this part here. So we're not gonna, I had some other stuff where we had to like press a button and stuff like that, but we're just gonna ignore that. So basically everything from here down to here uh, is what we want. And let's see, I think that's pretty much it. Everything else I think I'm just gonna ignore. Um, so I'm just gonna copy all of this stuff. Oh, I guess, yeah, I don't think I actually need much of this. So I'm just gonna copy this bit.
Okay, so I'm going to go in here and paste this. So our first line of code just says dialogic equals dialogic.start uh, with the dialog name. And we need to put a variable here. So a variable dialog equals dialogic.start and the dialog name. So this is how we get different dialogs from our uh, dialogic, from our timelines. And then we just add it to the screen. And I think that's pretty much all we have to do. That add child section will add it to our Godot screen. So let's give this a try. We may have to do a couple other things to get this to work correctly, but let's just see how this goes. So I need to walk over here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So once we enter the NPC area, it triggers a dialog. If I leave, the dialog stays there. So we may want to make it so that the character can't leave until the dialog is over. That's one thing that may, might be useful. Um, so what we can do is, since we know that the body section is the player, and let's open up my player script real quick. My player script has this variable called is moving. And if it's if that's set to false, then the player won't be able to move. So let's see if we can just set that directly. So let's go back to the NPC script. Let's say body dot is moving equals false. I think that will fix this part. So my player will have to stand around while they're talking. Okay, so now I can't move. So he is still walking, so maybe we should uh, we should set his animation too. So let's actually just make a little function here. So let's say body dot start dialog, and so then I'll go over to my player script, and I'll make a new function to start the dialog. So I'll say func start dialog. And I'll just say is moving equals false and uh, animated sprite dot play idle. So that way they won't keep walking. And then we're also going to want to end our dialog. So I'll say func end dialog is moving equals true. So we'll be able to move again. And so the last thing that we need to know is how do we start moving again? So uh, if we connect our timeline end, uh, we can connect that to a function that will get the player started again. Um, so I'm going to copy this and paste it here. And so then I'll just add a function here that says uh, end dialog. And so then we're actually going to need a reference to this uh, body section. So let's make a variable player and we'll say player equals body. I'll have to say player equals null. Don't worry about this whole script because I'm just going to I'm going to post the whole thing so you won't have to remember everything. So we're going to set player to the body. We'll say player dot start dialog and down here we'll say player dot end dialog. Okay, so now this should go. So let's try it again. Okay, so we're going to start our dialogue. So he says, what are you looking for? And oh, this shouldn't be a question, but let's say more apples. And he says, those are my apples. And I say, I'm going to run away. And that's the end of the dialogue should be able to move again, but I can't. So let's double check and make sure this is running. We'll say print. Oh, I actually have some bugs. So let's take a look. Huh. OK, it says error calling method timeline end and dialog method expected. OK, it doesn't like that for some reason. Let's take a look. Next timeline end, self, end dialog. 
Okay. Um, this seems right. Maybe they changed the way they do this. Uh, let's see. Or maybe I need to add a signal. Timeline N. Okay, let's see if that fixes it. Okay, we still got a bug. I have a feeling that they changed the way they want you to write this, so I'm gonna have to look up the documentation later because uh, a lot of these plugins get updated pretty frequently. So I'll fix that later, and I'll update the script. Um, but for now, uh, I think this is pretty good. I'm going to go over a couple of the visual things that we can change, and uh, that'll be it. So we, when we saw the dialogue just there, that was the default theme. If we go to the default theme, we can make changes here. So you can see how it looks. And there's a lot of different stuff we can do here. So we can change like the size of the text, we can change the basic way that the text works. You can add your own font, which is a little bit of a longer process, but I've gone over that in previous classes, so I can send you videos for that if you're interested. Um, but we can just like change some basic stuff. So for example, um, if I wanna change the text color, do that. Uh, if we wanna change it to you know match one of the characters, or I guess we want a neutral text because uh, we have our colors for our characters. Um, we can turn the shadow on or off. Uh, with the dialog box itself, it has this like default background texture. So we can turn that off and just have like a block if we want. Um, we can also change the color there. Uh, so we can do different stuff with that. Um, you can add your own background texture as well. Like if I click on this and I have a different background texture that I want to use instead of the black box, I can design my own. Um, let's see, I can change the name label. Uh, so I can change the shadow here. I can turn off the character color, turn it on. I can add a box behind the, la the label. For the buttons, I can change a lot of stuff with those. And I can also change um, the arrow button. I forget where that is, but there's a place where I can actually change this arrow button as well. So I'm going to leave these defaults um, for now because obviously we'd have to create assets and do all the other stuff to make this work. Um, but that's just to show that there's a lot of stuff that we can actually change here. Um, okay, so I'm going to save that, and I'll figure out what the error is, uh, but once we have that uh, set up, I'll post the uh, some links to the new code for this, so the player controller is updated a little bit, and then there's a new NPC script that's a lot simpler um, than what we've done in the past, so I think that'll be a little bit easier. Um, so I'll post those as soon as I get a chance to, and I'll link those in the video as well. Um, all right, so I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop the recording.